Hey guys, some of you asked me, Daniel, what's your thoughts on Andrew Tate? Hmm. Well, there's a lot of things that's going through my head at the moment, but for some of you who do not know who he is, check out this first. I have seen so many women fail to park and crash cars and do dumb I do not want a female pilot flying me through a hurricane. His anti-women diatribes often going viral. I've seen enough female driving of all vehicles to know that that is a bad idea. And that's a fundamental tenet of the male supremacist doctrine, that women are a second class to men. Former kickboxer and Big Brother contestant Andrew Tate, infamous for being the self-proclaimed king of toxic masculinity. A man can only cheat if he loves someone else. If I have a woman who I truly love and I go out and f and I come back to her and I don't care about her and I only love my girl, that's not cheating. That's exercise. If she even talks to a dude, it's cheating. We had to practice if a girl comes at you, ah, ah, you cheated, you cheating. It's bang out the machete, boom in her face, and then grip her up by the neck. But shut up, Before the Hustlers Academy, little is known about how Tate made his money. He and his brother had a pornographic webcam business in their hometown of Luton since 2012. After he moved to Romania in 2017, he set up a number of darker businesses, including casinos and another webcam operation that is at the center of this police investigation. Tristan Tate has openly described the webcam business as a scam in which young women dupe men into handing over money. The Matrix has attacked me. He's called himself the king of toxic masculinity, but now controversial influencer Andrew Tate has been arrested in Romania. Hello, hello. Andrew Tate's a former kickboxer. He's now a social media influencer. Last year, he was more Googled than Donald Trump or Kim Kardashian and his contents amassed hundreds of millions of views. His enthusiasm for misogyny, cars and wealth has delivered fame, thousands of fans and many thousands of dollars. Uh, well, I think Andrew Tate was uh, and his team are quite, quite aware of the fact that any publicity, even bad publicity, would help them. And that was perhaps one of the reasons they decided to, to let us in. I think what they didn't realize was that we were also simultaneously doing an investigation into him that ultimately led to us speaking to, for the first time, some of the women from his past who alleged that he uh, raped and abused them. Now, that was just a quick introduction. And just so you know, I don't really trust all news sources. And uh, I don't know Andrew Tate personally, right? So I cannot really judge him because I've never met him, but I can only try to judge him righteously by looking at what he himself has said on social media. And some of you also know that he's been recently arrested for, for what? For sex trafficking and for rape. Influencer Andrew Tate was arrested in Romania with his so-called Tate's Angels girlfriend Georgiana Nagel and glamorous former cop Luana Radu, along with his kickboxer brother Tristan. Heavily armed police broke down the door of his compound in Bucharest on Thursday night as part of a rape and human trafficking investigation. Mail Online has spent years tracking the activities of Tate and talking to his relatives, but many questions remain. Now, when he was arrested, he said something interesting. He said, the Matrix attacked him. The, the Matrix you. has attacked me. Now, I know a lot of people say that he is innocent and a lot of people say he's guilty. I'm not going to jump on this wagon. But it is interesting to look at his past as well. Something interesting that happened. Okay. Say five I mean, words and I'll walk off. Yeah. In 2016, Tate was cast on the British version of Big Brother, but was kicked off the show after only five days. According to a report from Vice, Big Brother's producers removed Tate from the show once they learned he was under investigation for rape. Tate was never charged. After Big Brother, Tate started to build his online empire and a webcam business where he paid women to perform on camera. Tate claimed the business once earned $600,000 a month. Success is actually nothing to do with being good at your job. Well, now that probably depends on what you mean by success because different people view success differently as will become clear as we continue in this video. Now let's do this. To tell you what I really think about Andrew Tate, I need to do so righteously. A lot of people say, well, Daniel, you can't judge, right? The Bible says you shouldn't judge and you're a Christian. Well, that's not exactly what the Bible says. It says that we should not judge wrongly and that we should look at ourselves first. You know, instead of casting a stone, we should first look at our own lives and see if there's anything that we are doing that's 
the same or even worse. And then if we sorted that out, then we can judge righteously. And it says that we should judge righteously between right and wrong. Now the verse they usually use and quote where they say, hey, you shouldn't judge people. That's what the Bible says is Matthew 7 verse 1. It says, judge not that you be not judged. So they use this verse, but they don't read the rest of it. Listen to verse 4. It says, Or how can you say to your brother, Let me take the speck out of your eye, when there is the log in your own eye? You hypocrite! First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. So when you want to judge someone who's swearing, but you do the same thing, you can't judge that person. A lot of parents do it, right? When their kids are swearing, they're like, don't swear. But the parents are the ones that's swearing the most. You can't do that. You're a hypocrite. So sort yourself out first before you want to tell someone else what to do. And then the Bible says that you have to judge righteously between what is right and what is wrong. John 7 verse 24. Do not judge by appearances, but judge with right judgment. All right, so let's do this. I believe a lot of people, especially young guys, they like Andrew Tate because he says things that others are too scared of saying, especially in the world that we live in today, where people are fighting just for the freedom of speech. I never thought that we would live in this day and age, but this is where we are. And so Andrew, he's not afraid to say what he thinks and what he believes. And he actually says stuff that I agree with. I wake up every day excited. I'll go do this today. I'll go do this today. I'll go do this today. And I very much live my life in a frame of not a, I have to do this. It's very much a I get to do this. There's another thing that a lot of people make a mistake with when I talk to them. Like, oh, I have to go to work today. Change your language. I get to go to work today. Imagine you had no job. It'd be worse, right? Because otherwise you wouldn't be working. So you get to go to work. Oh, I have to fix the car. At least you have a car. You get to fix your car. Most people don't got one. Oh, I have to go get the kids. You get to go get the kids because you have these beautiful children who love you. He also says things that I agree with where men need to be men. And that men do certain jobs. They work really hard at certain jobs that some women won't do just to provide for their family. In hey, fact, mom. I believe in marriage. In, no, please. Okay. I believe in marriage in the traditional sense. I believe a man has a duty to stand up and be a real man. I believe that the problem with the world today that we are facing is that not enough men are sticking to the age-old ways of masculinity. Mm -hmm. I believe that me standing up and saying a man must protect a woman and provide for her, so he needs to make sure that she's safe. He needs a degree of authority to I protect her. I have no her. problem with... No, but no, you, but people do have a problem with it. I'm, and that's I'm the, not... Sorry. And that's the world we're in now. Andrew, I'm over here. Sure. I don't have a problem with what you just said. Here's where my problem comes, right? There are a lot of clips of you floating around on the internet, as you know. One of them has you saying, bang out the machete, boom in her face, grip her by the neck, shut up, In another, you say, slap, slap, grab, choke, shut up, sex. Now, the first part here, I agree with. Being a real man and protecting your family, taking care of the things that you need to do, taking responsibility, right? But, man, these other vulgar comments that he made, I don't agree with at all. And then he's also right about talking about all the craziness that's in the world. Crazy people like evil influencers. And, we're, and I'm, not, I'm certainly not the worst influence out here, Piers. You have little Nas twerking on the devil on music videos, which our children are digesting. You have uh, drill artists singing about stabbing people to death in the middle of a knife crime epidemic. You have rabid uh, psychopaths on whether the right or the left announcing violence on the other side. You have all these insanities in the world. Now with that said, I think he's clever in the way where he knows how to get views. And so I think that he's putting up a persona, acting rough and tough and showing that a real man is rich, has many cars, dates as many girls as he wants, and is arrogant and selfish. So he created this image of himself as a toxic male. And I think he did it on purpose. He also believes most of the stuff that he says, of course, but he's pushing it even harder because it creates drama. Not just with what he says, but the way he says it. And then drama creates more views, right? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm all for masculinity, but not for toxic masculinity. I believe that men should be men, real men, men of good character, good values, and fighting for what is right, protecting their families. All of those things, I agree with 100%. 
But Andrew is mixing the good with the bad and the ugly. And he's doing it to create drama. This is a very serious point because the Western world has collapsed in real time and it's a failed society. And one of the reasons it's a failed society is because of the over-sexualization, especially of females as a whole. I agree. Certain people in power positions with an evil agenda is pushing sex on everyone, on civilization. They're doing it through... Well, first of all, they have a lot of money and a lot of power, right? So evil corporations, you have the media and you have entertainment. Especially entertainment because we're a society that are addicted to entertainment. So what's the result? When you look at these last few decades, more and more and more and more sex everywhere you look. You have men who grow up not understanding what the true meaning of sex is and they think that they are weird and strange if they are still virgins at the age of 15, 16. Which leads a lot of people to have unprotected sex and children. If there's a kid coming, then you just run away. So you have these men who just want to have sex, women as well, but then there, there's a kid who's growing up without a father because the father runs away. And so you have these broken families and the more you have of them, you have broken societies. And it's mostly because of us men. A lot of men out there who don't want to take responsibility for their actions because they're only led by their fleshly sinful desires. They just want to have sex. And it causes a lot of pain and suffering in the world. Now, listen to what Andrew does. Listen how he spins this into the bad and the ugly. If a woman comes up to me and goes, I'll be the best sex you ever had, I <laughs> bolted. I don't want the best sex I've ever had. I want you to be pure and a virgin. You shouldn't know what sex is. <laughs> Shut up. Don't, hey. talk, don't come and talk to me about file. <laughs> it's disgusting. I don't, Can I say I don't want to what, what I want is a woman who makes me look good. All right, number one, I think I find it really hard to listen to people who cuss a lot because I, I really do have less respect for people who cuss. Because if you think that you need to use cuss or swear words to enhance your speech because you don't feel that your speech is good enough on its own or you are good enough, then it's actually sad. A lot of people are using it for crutch words, but also people think that their normal speech is not good enough. And they want to sound cooler and better, but it doesn't make you cooler or better. It is not only wrong, it is vulgar. And you shouldn't do it. You should have some self-respect. Be a man of character, a man of value. The Bible says in Ephesians 4 verse 29, Do not let unwholesome, foul, profane, worthless, vulgar words ever come out of your mouth, but only such speech as is good for building up others, according to the need and the occasion, so that it will be a blessing to those who hear you speak. Now, just about the other comments that Andrew made in that clip. I believe a lot of men would like to marry a virgin, right? And it's exactly the same the other way around. Women would like to marry a virgin. And the Bible says that you shouldn't have sex outside of marriage. And that includes before marriage. And that used to be the dominant view in society. But the entertainment industry changed it. The media changed it. Hebrews 13 verse 4. Let marriage be held in honor among all. And let the marriage bed be undefiled. For God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. For you young men out there, if you want to listen to the world and act like the world, then you will have divorces like the rest of the world. When you look at society today, even celebrities, you know, you think that they would have it all. All the successes this world could offer them. Fame, money, success, and then they're not happy. Then you'll be one of those people who just wants antidepressants all the time just to take you out of reality because you want to escape. You can't deal with the normal world anymore. That's because of the decisions that you make and the things that you believe. That's part of this world. Don't think it's cool to sleep as much as you can with as many women as you can because it creates a lot of problems and those problems will follow you for the rest of your life especially when you finally find the woman that you really love you bring all those experiences and that baggage with you into the marriage and it can create a lot of problems and it does create a lot of problems for a lot of men and women now watch this this is one percent of men have created this terrible society yeah i talk about that i talk about the matrix i talk about these things but it's always been this way it's always been a small elite group of men who are in charge of the world 
And unfortunately now, we're fighting battles in different ways. The, 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 the days of old, a man proved his worth by going to war. Basically, every man at any point in his life was going to end up going to war, and he came back victorious, he came back with honor, he got himself a wife. That's, that's how it worked, right? Now men don't have to go to war as much, depending on where you live in the world, and it's slightly different, and we fight our wars in other ways. And one of the true expressions of testosterone and trying to really express your ability and your combative ability now in the, in the modern world is power and influence. So in the olden days, you go to war, you come back with a ribbon. Nowadays, you got X amount of followers, you can move the world with money. I can bend reality with money. Please understand, it's if true. I walk into Jimmy Choo, they lock the door. No brokies allowed in. Tate's here. I want. There's lines outside because I'm there. First, a lot of men still go to war, but they don't need to go to war to prove their worth. Especially if you're a man of character, then you know. <laughs> you don't need to prove your worth to anyone because you already know your worth. Second, running after money and power is easy for a man because that's what your sinful flesh want to do and he wants to brag about it like Andrew but a real man does not want power fame or gain the whole world in this short temporary life because he knows it won't profit him if he loses his soul in the end for all eternity because he sees the bigger picture of life he fights to overcome evil with good. He wants to take care of his family, provide and protect because he knows that a real battle is not against other people, against flesh. It's against evil itself. Evil pulling the strings behind the scenes. Ephesians 6 verse 12 says, For we do not wrestle against the flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. So when it comes to Andrew, I think he's, he's clever in the wrong way. His strategy is to start out good and to say something that is truthful. But then he makes the wrong conclusion. Sometimes he's right, sometimes he's wrong. But he's, he's doing it and he's also saying it in a way that will just create drama. I agree with what Ben Shapiro said. But like Andrew Tate got such traction. Yes, so I, what I've said about Andrew Tate is that I would say that 75% of Andrew Tate's diagnoses of the problem are pretty correct. Yeah, I agree. And then I would say that a lot of his prescriptions are completely wrong. Yeah. Right? So, so he, will, he will say men have lost their role in the world. And then what he will model is cam girls. Mm. It's like, well, that, that's not actually the solution. But what you're saying about the problem of men losing their role and men needing to be masculine and men needing to want to win and men needing to cultivate uh, an ability to, to go out and succeed and thrive in the world. All of that is 100% true. I just think that he himself on a personal level wasn't providing a model of that. To me, a model of that is a guy who is married, who has kids, who lives in the community, who betters the community he lives in, who hires people, who creates a business. Like These are the things that, historically speaking, did define manhood. And now they no longer define manhood. And men well, are left I think that you can chart the moment of deterioration for the moment James Bond started crying. So it's not just what Andrew Tate says. It's the way he says it. And he's doing it purposefully to rile people up, you know, to shock them and to create that drama just to get the views. Even if it's true, some of the things that he says, he still knows if he says it this way, and first he gets them and they agree, and, and then he whoosh, says something that just kind of shocks them and then rile them up and then creates drama. There's not a girl on this panel or on the planet today who couldn't walk outside and find a man who's gonna be nice to her, loyal to her, and make her his queen. Mm -hmm. I agree, but now look at how he changes it up. Women don't want that. So they'll sit there and go, no, I want Chris Brown. And then they'll go try to get Chris Brown. Then Chris Brown will cheat. And they'll be like, I can't believe he cheated. I am devastated. <laughs> Things going to happen. Yeah, a lot of women, especially young women, go for bad guys. Especially if they don't understand what the difference is between arrogance and confidence. Because there is a line, but they don't understand it yet. And uh, we also need to remember that all women are not the same. All men are not the same. And it's also the other way around. A lot of men fall for the wrong woman, and that messes up their lives as well. But now look how... Andrew uses this and turns it around to try and justify his own sinful desires to cheat. And it's kind of like going to a car dealership. You walk in there, you, if, you, if you want reliability, you can get a Nissan. But if you want to get a Ferrari, it comes with, it comes with headaches. It's going to come with problems. So when girls say to me, oh, you know what, Andrew, you know, you should be loyal to that. Men like me don't have to be. The conclusion he's making is not just wrong, it is dangerous. If a lot of men in the world live this way, we would have a lot more broken families, which of course, as I always say, lead to what? 
broken societies. And when you look at the world today, we are a whole, we just, we are a mess because of it. And then he compares himself to a Ferrari, in other videos to an alpha male. And you know, here's the strangest thing about people who do this. It is usually the type of men who feel the need that they need to tell other people how great they are, who are the most insecure. Real men of character know they don't need to say anything. They never boast about themselves and their actions speak for themselves. They never say anything. Instead, they would boost other people up and build them up and put the focus on them. That's a real man. James 4 verse 16. As it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. And Paul said in 2 Corinthians 11 verse 30. If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. Why weakness? You know, the older I get, the more I realize, you know, there's still so much that I can learn about life. I don't have it all, you know? So the more you really grow in wisdom, the more you understand how big this world is and how small you really are. And so you understand how weak we are as human beings. And that makes you powerful, actually, with that knowledge. But if you identify your own weaknesses, when you listen to other people, other successful people, men who have good character and good values, if you learn from them, you grow as a person. You start to look at life differently. The more you grow, the more you realize there's still so much that you can learn of life. And living life this way, understanding your own weaknesses and, and how to change it and live differently, makes you more powerful. Listen, elevating yourself in your own mind, oh, I'm a Ferrari, based on what your sinful flesh wants to believe, I know facts, but you're just doing it, you know, <laughs> it's pathetic. It's based on what your sinful flesh wants to believe and you're just giving into it. Our sinful flesh, mine included, is pathetic. We are led by our emotions. A lot of people are who are led by their sinful desires and they give in and they, they give in by trying to rationalize their emotions like Andrew Tate does. In the end, in, in this example, he's just using excuses so that he can cheat. Giving in to his sinful flesh, his urges. And that's just what an animal does. It's easy to do that. But a real man has self-control. A real man has character lives by good values and morals. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 2 says, But because of the temptation to sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife, and each woman her own husband. His own wife, not another woman, someone else's wife, your own wife. Now, I want you to watch this because I have a lot of concerns with this. Tax is also another important element for controlling your woman. You're not going to pay anybody tax because you're getting paid in Bitcoin. So you don't need to pay tax to anybody. Tell your girl that you're paying the tax. Because girls are lazy, and girls are stupid, and girls don't understand how taxes work. So the girl's working with you, and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, we've made this much money, but I'm going to pay the tax to make sure we don't get in trouble. She'll sit there and go, okay, okay. Now that allows you to do two things. One, it's another control element. I work with him, my tax is not a problem. If I do it alone, I have to deal with taxes. Taxes are complicated. So I used to pay my girls 30%. So for every $10,000 they made, I give them three and I keep seven. They thought they were on 50%. And I said that the disparity is because of taxes. So you're on 50%, we get to pay the tax first and then it's 50-50. So really you're paying 30, you tell them you're paying 50. The difference is in the tax. That's where the disparity lies, taxes. If, you, if they don't believe you or they want to get fresh or whatever, print out some tax forms. I see this all the time. I just print out some random tax forms and say, yeah, sign here and sign this. What is it? It's for the tax. You want to pay the tax or not? Ooh, okay. And they just sign away. I don't know what signing. I'll throw them away afterwards. But they, they think something's happening. Something real is happening. Nothing's happening except me get rich. He's teaching men to control their women and not to pay taxes. Are you kidding me? Jesus said in Mark 12, verse 17, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. So he says that you should control your women. I mean, who do you think you are? And he uses the Bible a lot sometimes, and he uses verses out of context, wrongly, and people believe him because they don't read their Bibles. But the Bible is clear. It doesn't say you're the boss. It says that you're a leader. There's a difference between a leader and a boss. You're the leader of the home. Treat your wife like a queen and she will treat you 
like a king. Control her like a tyrant and she will hate you. The Bible actually says if you don't treat your wife the right way, your prayers will be hindered. This is how serious this is to God. 1 Peter 3 verse 7, Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Now, I agree with a lot of things that Andrew says. For example, that there are evil elites who want to control the world. That men should be more masculine because we should be men. <laughs> I will fight for masculinity, but the right understanding of what it means to be a man. I am on the side of truth, no matter who says it. For example, you should never deny the truth if the person who says it is someone that you don't like. So that also goes the other way around. You should never just believe a lie because you like the person who says it. No, you should stand with the truth. Elvis Presley, of all people, said, Truth is like the sun. You can shut it out for a time, but it ain't going away. I also disagree with a lot of things that Andrew says because it's just not true. And the way he says it, I also don't agree with certain ways that he's... Man, he's giving off this, this, this wrong idea of what a man is by the way that he talks sometimes as well. Being very egotistical, arrogant, toxic. And it is not only wrong, but it is extremely dangerous if he convinces thousands of guys out there to believe this. So I end up with all these chicks just stuck in their house, sitting there, bored, completely in love with me. And of course, they don't go out. They're not allowed out. No, 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 no. You don't go to the club with your friends. No. You stay in the house. You don't go nowhere. You are not no restaurants, no clubs, nothing. But if you could make a woman be loyal to you while not being loyal to her, then you would not be loyal to her. If a man's truly honest and says, if I can press this button and she's loyal to me no matter what I do, am I still going to only be with her? Now, you might prefer her. You might spend 99% of your time with her, etc. Completely get that. But on a long enough time frame for the rest of your human life, if she's going to be loyal to you regardless, are you telling me that with a without any kind of backlash from her, without the chance of her cheating, without you're gonna tell me for the next 50 years you're not gonna anything ever once? If she let you, why not? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like everyone would it. agree to that. Everyone but, would agree to it, right? So, if you show a woman how to make $1,000 in an hour, she'll think, I can work two hours a week. If you show a man how to make $1,000 in an hour, he thinks I can make $18,000 a day. Ha 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 ha! I am the ultimate victor. Please understand that there's no man on earth more powerful than me. I mean, I smoke cigars, but I know what I'm doing. Give me a big fat cigar. I'm risking cancer to look like a mafia boss. Fine. When you see a man like me at three o'clock on a Tuesday morning at a gas station in a $400,000 sports car, I get out of the Lambo, there's a front. I get out and putting gas in. Do you look at me and go, he studied really hard in school? Or do you look at me and think, drug dealer? You think drug dealer because you understand you must break the rules to make money. All right, let's just stop here. He just said that if you think that he's a drug dealer because of the car he drives, then you understand that rules need to be broken. Meaning to achieve success in this way, you need to break the rules. Laws. Are you kidding me? He's basically saying to thousands of guys, if you want to be rich and successful, drive a nice car, then you need to break the law. There is so much wrong here, I almost don't even know where to begin. But maybe the best way to explain to you is by, yeah, maybe talking to you about my brother, Jan. My eldest brother, he was a great guy who unfortunately hanged out with the wrong friends and started to sell drugs. It changed him. He wanted to live for the world. My brother had a lot of money. He had a great car. He looked cool, you know. He came home one day even with a lot of stuff on the truck that he took from people who couldn't pay him. Now let me quickly ask you, how many of you were thinking about money, success, cars, and oh, I want this? And how many of you for a moment actually thought about the people they've hurt? And I'm saying this about my own brother. I'm not defending him because he's my brother. I'm defending truth. 
A lot of people are destroying lives because of their greed, their desire for worldly success. And it's causing so much pain and suffering, especially if we just look at the drugs. People getting addicted to drugs, selling a lot of stuff just so they can get more drugs, <sighs> pushing out family members. And I mean, it's just so much pain and suffering. And my brother is dead. He was in his early 20s. He had the world. And he died. The drug dealer who he worked for, more like the kingpin, the drug lord, shot him three times in the chest. And he's gone. Matthew 16, verse 25. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world? Wealth, fame, success, but forfeits his soul. My brother is dead. As we're speaking, as you're listening to this video, his bones are lying in a grave. He had money, he had a nice house, he had a car, he had everything that this world will think is, ah, oh, it's amazing. But he's dead. None of that matters. When Andrew Tate dies, none of his things will matter. When you die, none of your things will matter. What matters is how you live your life before you die. What matters is that my brother, two weeks before he died, which happened to be on my dad's birthday, he changed his life. He went to God and he repented of his sins. He said, I'm sorry. He started to realize what he was doing. He wanted to turn his life around. He said, God, he prayed with his friend called Philip. He said, I want to I wanna change my life. God, please forgive me for everything that I've done. You've always been there with me. I pushed you away, but now I'm coming back to you. I'm knocking on your door. That was two weeks before he died. He wanted to flee to England and the drug lord shot him. Now, from a worldly perspective, that's sad. It's, oh no, for me, I'm grateful because he's in heaven. He's got eternal life. You see, the real test of your short existence here on earth is if you're going to choose the light or the darkness. The easy path or the hard path. It is easy to choose the world and all its darkness because your sinful nature wants to. So it's easy to give in and be controlled by your urges. It is hard to fight it and choose the light. This temporary world goes by in an instant. And Andrew Tate says, you understand that you need to break the law to achieve success and to be rich. I say that is exactly what is wrong with this world. People who break the law, living selfishly, not caring about other people, who is causing this world to be what it is right now causing so much pain and suffering. Andrew says you gotta chase after success even if you have to break the law and control your woman like a tyrant. I say that it is better to be a man of value than to be a man of success. Because if you are a man of value, then that is actually what it means to be really successful. Great men of the past who made a name for themselves, who we remember today, we don't remember them for starting porn sites and making quick rich schemes, and uh, grabbing women by the throat, like what Andrew Tate is doing. No, that's not real men. Is that what you want to be remembered for? Great men are being remembered for being men of character, men of value. Abraham Lincoln led the nation of America through civil war and abolished slavery. Martin Luther King, the preacher, inspired by his Christian beliefs, fought for civil rights through nonviolence. Jesus Christ, the most famous of all, gave His life for all humanity. You know, if there's one example of what it means to be a true man, that is Jesus Christ. Even other great men who left their mark on this world, they said Jesus was amazing. Albert Einstein, considered one of the most intelligent men to ever walk on the earth. He said this, As a child, I received instruction both in the Bible and in the Talmud. I am a Jew, but I am enthralled by the luminous figure of Jesus the Nazarene. And even Gandhi said, 
A man who was completely innocent offered himself as a sacrifice for the good of others, including his enemies, and became the ransom of the world. It was a perfect act. Why Jesus? Why was he the perfect example of a man? Was he rough, tough, and he was arrogant and selfish? He walked on other people and sacrificed their lives so that he can gain more money to be successful, sold drugs, or... Listen, he was perfect. He lived a perfect life and showed us men how to be real men and to live our lives righteously, the right way, loving other people, not being selfish. There's so much that we can talk about when it comes to Jesus Christ. My small brain cannot even compre comprehend Him, but He's the only person that changed my life, 100%. 180 degrees I changed. I used to be this arrogant, this selfish, just like Andrew Tate. I used to be like him. And when my second brother died, everything changed. I felt God speaking to me in my spirit, in my inner man. Daniel, what are you doing with your life? Wasting it. This is your second brother. You could have died. Where would you have gone? I can read the same things over and over and I can't get enough. I still grow from it. Jesus is the only role model that I will ever follow until the day I die. Because He's got the power to change lives. He changed mine and He's still changing lives today. Sholom Ask, Polish-born essayist, said this, Jesus Christ, to me, is the outstanding personality of all time, all history both a son of God and a son of man. Everything he ever said or did has value for us today. And that is something you can say of no other man, alive or dead. Count Leo Tolstoy, Russian novelist and philosopher. For 35 years of my life, I was in the proper acceptation of the word. Nihilist, a man who believed in nothing. Five years ago, my faith came to me. I believed in the doctrine of Jesus Christ and my whole life underwent a sudden transformation. Jean-Jacques Rousseau, French philosopher. Shall we suppose the evangelic history a mere fiction? Indeed, my friend, it bears not the marks of fiction. On the contrary, the history of Socrates, which nobody presumes to doubt, is not so well attested as that of Jesus Christ. Reynolds Price, American writer and Bible scholar. It would require much exotic calculation, however, to deny that the single most powerful figure, not merely in these two millenniums, but in all human history, has been Jesus of Nazareth. Young men, if you want to know what a true man is, stop listening to crazy, weird people on social media. If you want a good role model, an example of the perfect man, look at the life of Jesus Christ. Grab a Bible and start reading the New Testament for yourself instead of listening to what other people say. And it will change your life. Maybe you're at a point in your life where you need to make a decision where you need to change your life. I want to ask you as someone who loves you, who cares about you, don't choose the darkness because nothing good will come from it. You'll just go further down this deep hole and it will bring a lot of pain and suffering. And at the end, you'll lose your soul for all eternity. It is not worth it. I wish that I could just show you what's in my, my head, all the experiences I had, all the truth that I know that this is a reality that you could just see the truth for yourself. If you're curious about how I was brought up, how I know about the existence of demons, then God, and watch these videos here, and I'll see you there. And always remember, life is short, so don't waste yours. Cheers, guys.